Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Fogg and in this video we are going to discuss about Bi-Inspired Soft Robotics. So the reason behind making this video is to let people know and what this field is all about and especially what we have done in this field so far and what we are going to do in ne near future and what we are going to do in near future. So these are the contents of uh, today's uh, video. Uh, in the very beginning the introduction about robotics or soft robotics and then its fundamentals and then various approaches which are being used in this field the role of 3d and 4d printing and of course some predominant questions about this as we all know that robots they are getting popularity day by day and frankly speaking the day is not so far that each one of us will have their own robot with us just like we are having smartphone with us so when i'm talking about robots is it like I'm talking about these robots which are quite bulky, they exert huge forces and they are normally available in different assembly lines, you know, automobile and their job is to carry, you know, very tough and heavy parts from one part, one place to another place for further process. So actually, I'm not going to discuss about these robots. Actually, in fact, I'm going to talk about these robots which are fluffy, they are soft, flexible and they're compliant and above all they do not pose any danger to the human when they interact with each other so that's why we call them as soft robots so briefly speaking that is the subfield of robotics and uh, mainly it is by inspired by nature uh, sometimes we get inspiration from uh, the structure the movement the behavior of any natural object and uh, quite interesting is that it does not contain any rigid part like motors and other things rather it is made up of very soft and deformable material so very common materials which are used in this field are uh, silicon plastic fabric and rubber and there are so many other materials which i'm not going to discuss over here uh, in detail i will make in a separate video in which we will target uh, these materials uh, and some other uh, very famous materials which are currently being used and here if we talk about this field um, this is a completely interdisciplinary field and uh, you know one has to be very good at mechatronics the materials and of course the computers and uh, you know soft electronics soft machines different types of 3d printing even 4d printing some biological materials because we are going to buy and take the inspiration from uh, you know real life right so we need to understand about these materials as well which are being used by the natural creatures and soft computing and biocomputing of course they play a vital role in this field so <clears throat> a brief uh, comparison about soft robotics and conventional robotics is that conventional robotics is inspired by conventional engineering where we are more interested in speed, force, accuracy, certainty I mean uh, you know if we are trying to achieve these parameters and of course we you know we go for uh, these kind of uh, heavy robots so however and if we talk about soft robotics they are mainly inspired by biological systems and what we achieve from that we have flexible adoptable and reachable robots with you know risk-free interaction with humans so uh, that's a question uh, uh, in fact uh, very interesting question that can we take lessons from nature of course yes but you know by inspiration is not just looking at a human how you know uh, he or she functions and we just take the inspiration from him rather we are just uh, we we normally ignore that it is actually uh, the result of evolution and that is based on natural selection this means that due to incremental adaptation uh, we have uh, this human as a subject right now so we cannot say that there is a final robot or there is a final design that we just copy or you know start designing that and that's it so this is evolution and we should focus on that that every next iteration of designing a robot would be better than the previous one so that means that by inspiration is not just copying the nature 
it is actually the extraction of key principles key objects and very important behavioral and other relevant you know parameters we should we should focus in order to design our robot and above all we have embodied intelligence in soft robotics because embodied intelligence tells us that uh, even the individual parts of the robot they have their own brain a kind of a local brain so that most of the tasks they can do by their own and this if and if this is achieved this means that we can say that body really matters in the soft robotics and of course if we have this feature in our soft robotics then control is very much simplified here we have an example that we can learn from octopus you can see over here the arm of octopus once he's inside water he interacts with objects uh, you know the arm is uh, interacting with object very you know smoothly without taking signal from its brain and similarly we here we have a uh, custom designed fabricated uh, you know silicon fabricated uh, arm of octopus and uh, you can see over here that it is uh, once we you know put it inside water it interacts with uh, uh, you know different objects very smoothly similarly uh, quite similar to the arm of octopus so this means that uh, your body matters and hence if we achieve this the control is simplified because we don't we we won't be able to put more burden on the central brain or central processor of the robot rather the individual parts can be designed in such a way using some smart functional materials using 3d and 4d printing that it can you know achieve uh, such dynamics uh, you know without taking signal from the robot so how by inspired of course we have uh, an, uh, the natural octopus and here we have custom developed or by inspired soft octopus and then we have uh, an insect and here pneumatically controlled insect robot has been developed and similarly we have a mechanical gripper but if we replace it with a soft um, gripper then you can see that we have dexterous manipulation and of course this is easy and safe to interact with human the objects which require dexterity and uh, softness soft robotics is the sub field of uh, robotics which deals with the construction of compliant materials and uh, you don't have any motor or any other rigid part which is used normally in the conventional robotics to actuate or create motion so here we have simple uh so here we have variety of examples of uh, soft robotics which have been developed by different researchers and engineers uh, across the world and similarly here we have uh, soft manipulators uh, or grippers you can see and you can see their compliant nature and uh, flexible nature makes them quite robust to interact with those objects and here we have kind of medically assisted bio inspired robots so uh, you know there are various fabrication techniques uh, that can be used and of course 3d and 4d printing they are the key and vital or uh, i can say the most important parts of designing the soft robot because without them it's highly difficult to you know fabricate a robot so various approaches have been used and they are currently even used uh, here we have dielectric elastomer actuators which are normally based on any composite uh, piezo electric material but uh, their limitation is that they require huge voltage to be actuated and in the same way we have fuel reaction based uh, robots uh, then we have uh, another uh, you know approach in which we normally use rigid parts inside it like in this uh, you know robot fish robot you can see that we have added uh, hydraulic system or kind of engine inside it but outer body is quite compliant so we have a debate i mean there is a huge debate in the robotics fraternity that whether we should call it as a fro you know soft robot or not but uh, for now we can call them uh, soft robots and then we have shape memory alloy on which most of our work is based on and similarly we have pneumatic based uh, in which we use air pressure to you know actuate uh, the robot and this is the most commonly used approach and the last one is hybrid approach which is used uh, by exploiting the cells muscle cells or other cells uh, you know which can be used to actuate or create motion using some uh, applied voltage 
so this was our main target and we have uh, 